Hey class, today we are going to take a look at the Momentum Lab. First thing we're going to check out is the setup, which is here. And there's a great diagram of this in your um, lab materials, but this is a top-down view of the same thing. The only thing I did differently was you can't see it, but I did put a little tape down here to help the board stay a little bit more stable as the cart was running down at every time. But I marked the 10 centimeter spots. This is my starting line. This is my ending line. And then in this point, I'm just showing you where to adjust the cart, cart B, so that you can get the book in the right place for cart B to hit it, just because that makes it easier to time it if you're timing when the cart hits the book rather than when the cart passes a line. Um, we'll talk more about that in a minute. This first scenario is really straightforward. Neither cart has any mass, any extra mass in it. So you've got um, cart A before impact, you're going to find that velocity. You need the velocity of cart A after impact. You need the velocity of cart B after impact. So the first one we're going to do is the velocity of cart A before impact. You take cart B out of the thing entirely. You run cart A down the track and you time from when it passes the starting mark to when it passes the ending mark. And that's going to be 50 centimeters. So whatever the time is, you're going to divide it by, you're going to do 50 centimeters divided by that time to get its velocity. Cart A after impact, this one is really easy because cart A comes down and just stops. So for this one, the velocity of cart A after impact is zero. And then if you're doing it by video, you can really get everything you need off of that one video. But if you're doing it by watching it and timing it as it's live, you're going to have to run it again because the first time you're going to be able to watch cart A, the second time you're going to be able to watch cart B. So if we were running it again, cart A is coming down. Now we're watching cart B from when it hits cart A, we start the clock, to when it hits the book, we stop the clock. That time is 50 centimeters so you would need or the time corresponds to traveling 50 centimeters so make sure you convert that to meters and then divide it by your time and you have the velocity so three different velocities uh, before impact and then both cars after impact because cart b is at rest before impact so we already know its velocity is zero now then, let's move on to washers in cart A. This one was a little problematic for me as I was running it because A, cart A is going to chase cart B down the track. And so when cart B hits the book, it makes everything stop. And I didn't like that. So I took the book out completely. And the measure of velocity of cart A is just like we did before. You remove cart B, you run cart A down. You measure the time it takes to go 50 centimeters, you're done. Um, for cart A after impact, it's a little more difficult because as you can see, cart B takes off and then cart A just moves along. So again, if you're videotaping it, you can run the video once, focusing on cart A and timing how far it goes and how long it takes to go. And then you can do it again for cart B. If we run this one again, you can see that cart B started right around here. And then you can just pick a point to time it until. You don't have to time it until it stops. Just it hits here. As soon as it hits, start timing. And then as soon as you see it pass a point, start timing again. Or you can adjust your book further down so that um, you're still timing until it hits the book, but that distance might change. So feel free to play with that. There's nothing magical about this 50 centimeter distance, except that, you know, 50 is a nice number to work with. So you can feel free to play with where, the, where you place the book, don't place the book, um, but just make sure you get the times that correspond with a specific distance for both cart A and cart B after the collision. All right, and then now we're moving on to washers in cart B only. Same thing, cart A before the collision is just like we've been doing it. Remove cart B, run cart A, figure out how fast it's going. Those velocities should be pretty similar for part A because we know in general that the velocity that, comes off, that it comes off the ramp with isn't going to depend on mass, but in reality, you might have some changes there because of friction, but at any rate measure it for each um, different scenario. This one 
the problem I ran into that you'll see here is that the cart A started going back up the ramp when I finished it. It's not as fast of a reaction. It's really going to be easy to measure cart B along this 50, meter, uh, 50 centimeter track. But what you might want to do is instead of putting cart A or cart B right here at 10 centimeters, you might want to move it back a little bit because when cart A comes down, you see it goes up the ramp a little bit. So move everything this direction and then it gives cart A a little bit more room to move before it starts heading up the ramp, which is gonna mess up your numbers a little bit. But it's, it's pretty easy to do. You just have to do it over and over and over again. So you get it. So here is a sample data table. I just made up the numbers. Well, I mean, I calculated them so it would work the way I want it to work, but it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't correlate with one of your experiments that you're gonna do. So don't expect your numbers to look like these. Um, but the important thing is we have the mass of cart A. This number doesn't change. Before and after the collision, cart A is cart A. And then we have the mass of cart B down here. We don't need cart B before the collision because we know that the velocity is zero. So we just need cart B after the collision, which is what all this is down here. Um, the Important numbers are highlighted, so when it comes to finding ma uh, momentum, we need to know the velocity and we need to know the mass, which is why I highlighted those. To find this velocity number, it's really straightforward. I took the times, I averaged them, and then I just did distance divided by time to get velocity. Super easy. We know that mom momentum is conserved across the collision. That All that means is that if I look at the momentum before the collision and compare it to the momentum after the collision, theoretically those two values should be the same. But in an experiment, they will never match. So you're going to find a little bit of difference there, and any difference you see is automatically because of lab error, because you know the science tells us those numbers should match. The lab is not going to match, so you're going to have to think about what errors uh, contributed to that. So if we look at the momentum before the collision, um, all we're doing is the mass of A times the velocity of A plus the mass of B times the velocity of B. Well, we know the mass of A is 50, comes from there. The velocity of A is 1.74, which comes from there. You can put the units in here and carry them through your calculations, or you can just leave them. I left them off so that it wouldn't be so cumbersome to look at. Um, and then cart B, uh, it has a mass of 0.75 kilograms. It has a velocity of zero, so that whole term becomes zero. Multiply these together to get that, add those together, and then there is my total momentum, including units, before the collision. We're going to do the same thing looking at the momentum after the collision. After the collision is this number for A, this number for B. So, Mass of A is the same, it hasn't changed. Velocity of A is negative 0.5, which I get from right there. And then the mass of B is right there. And the velocity of B, I got right there, plugged it in. Multiply through, I get negative 0.25, because here, look at this, it went negative 0.15 meters. So that means it backed up and went the way it came from. So I carry that through into my momentum because momentum is a vector and direction is important. So for cart A after the collision, it has a momentum of negative 0.25. Cart B after the collision has a momentum of 1.29. I combine those to get 1.04 kilogram meters per second. These two numbers, theory tells us these two numbers should be the same. In the experiment, they are not. And we don't expect them to be the same because the experiment's not perfect. So what we have to think about is why are they different? What mistakes did we make along the way? So for each scenario, think about what is the hardest thing for you to measure accurately, and that's probably where your mistake is. I don't wanna see a copy and paste of the same errors written for all three trials. I want you to think about what was the hardest for you to measure and use that to explain why your numbers are probably different. 
The last part of each set is to find the percent difference between the two values. They give us the equation. It's basically the difference in the two values divided by the average of the two values multiplied by 100. So you plug in, these numbers are gonna come from over here. 0.87 was my first value, 1.04 is my second. Difference of those two values divided by the average of those two values multiplied by 100. The top one settles down to that, bottom one settles down to that, divide it all out, and we get an 18% difference. You might get bigger differences, you might get smaller differences, but you should get a difference every single time and you should think of the particular difficulty you had during that scenario that most likely led to the difference in momentums. Okay, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Just let me know and I'm always happy to answer. Good luck and have a great night.